Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news, WWE is trying to sign one of the top wrestlers in the world. Why WWE scrapped Karrion Cross's Smackdown return. Another day, another bloody CM Punk update. <laughs> and Gunther Khan wrestle outside the US for six months. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Hamden, yes. Yes. Eat it, Hibs. Let's talk about uh, Will Ospreay. We'll be doing that a lot over the coming months because mm. his contract is up in February and it's going to be yeah, probably the biggest, yeah, unless like a Becky or a, or a Drew's contract mm. expires earlier than we thought. Uh, he's he's going to be the biggest name to, to, to potentially move on elsewhere in early 2024. So we're going to be talking about him a lot. Every company is going to be in play for this guy because he's absolutely yeah. wonderful. Uh, and WWE is amongst them. Now, if you saw at the weekend, Will and Seth Rollins were being little rascals. Yeah. Uh, when, when Rollins defended the World Heavyweight title uh, against Drew McIntyre at the Blood Money Spectacular <laughs> uh, at the weekend, uh, Osprey quote tweeted it with a little side eye emoji. You know that mm. one that's looking oh. over there and over there oh. uh, and all that stuff. Uh, Rollins replied saying, the water is warm. Come on in, of course. Um, so, following on from this, Fightful Select came through with a report on this. WWE are heavily interested in Will Ospreay. Of course they are. Uh, company sources have indicated that there's been contact between the two parties, although sources on Ospreay's side would not confirm this. Mm. So that's interesting. Uh, beyond WWE, of course, uh, TNA, or the soon-to-be TNA, and AEW are also interested in acquiring Ospreay. Now, other outlets have reported that as of a couple of months ago, some people in AEW think it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, not Fightful, we should add. They mm -hmm. didn't report that. Um, However, Fivel notes that in recent months, Will's mind has been opened up a little bit. Maybe it's not such a foregone conclusion. Now, New Japan sources have indicated they would love to retain Osprey, although they wouldn't expect it to be on a deal similar to what he currently has now, which is a full-time mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and uh, there is currently no word on the extent of WWE's advances towards Mr. Osprey, uh, although people in the company have indicated that preliminary overtours have been made. Uh, so there you go. WWE want to sign Will Ospreay. Of course they do. Yeah. He signed that bloke. What's his name? Barry. <laughs> the Barry. <laughs> he hired that Barry guy. Barry Bloom? Is that the guy? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know who you were talking about that for a second. I was like, Wolfgang. Are you talking about Wolfgang? <laughs> yeah, he signed Barry Bloom, uh, I think. I can't remember. Oh, how can I can't remember his name? Very famous yes, guy. I remember. Like, represented the elite. The Chris contract Jericho, guy, yeah. yeah uh, Scott Hall, uh, Kevin Nash. Big famous guy who will help him get lots of money. Uh, but yeah, cool. Like uh, he, He's going to be one of the most sought after wrestlers in the world. Yeah, like you say, unless MJF is actually running his contract out in AEW at the end of this year, it's going to be the hottest free agent is, is Will Ospreay next year. And I think if you just asked me a year ago, Will Ospreay's contract's going to run out, where do you think he's going to go? I'd have put my house on AEW if he was going to leave New Japan. Especially because, obviously, that leaves the door open to still work in New Japan. But things have changed a lot throughout this year. And now all of a sudden, I think there's a real chance that Osprey could go to WWE. Obviously, big changes there. Um, and, you know, we, we've talked about this before. Maybe he just wants to, because I know people will be like, well, he can't have these amazing five star matches. I still think he can have some great matches in WWE. Don't get me wrong. He can't have 27 star No, exactly. WWE, um, yeah. But maybe, you know, Will, who's been amazing, but just destroyed his body over the years. Maybe he wants to work a little bit of a you know, more casual style and get p -p 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 paid, paid in the Fed. I, I don't know. Like, interesting to see how, uh, let's say, uh, social media interactions between Seth Rollins and Willisbury have changed over the years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Seth knows what he's doing. Uh, I really admire, like, like, maybe don't use the C word to talk about wrestlers. Um, Hmm. CM Punk. Uh, that's the C word. No, you <laughs> know what I mean. The, what way, the way he discussed CM Punk yeah. is a bit like, I would prefer we use different words yeah. uh, than faithful illnesses that cost millions of lives. Um, however, uh, I, I kind of like his approach is so fun mm. to follow. It's so company line. I, I kind of admire it, not gonna lie. I like the fact that TNA have, have st stuck their hand up as well. I watched him at Turning Point, of course, uh, the other week. It was brilliant. You can go and watch that on their streaming platform right now. He faced Eddie Edwards uh, in the main event. But 
I don't know, mate. It's a coin toss between AEW and WWE for me, for me right now with Will Ospreay, and I'm very yeah. excited to see how this pans out. Yeah, 100%. Let us know in the comments below where do you want to see Will go? Where do you think he'll go? And where do you want to see him go? Because they might be completely different. Yeah, it I think he'll go to AEW. And I think he'll go to WWE. And I hope he stays in New Japan, personally. Yeah. Makes it more interesting. Spread uh, the wealth. He did also hint that he was going to make a big announcement after Turning Point finished. And then his big announcement was, I finished my kitchen. So, well played, Will. Oh, quality. Phil was getting his phone like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. What happened after Impact? Yeah, we were all over it. It would have been a bit of a surprise if that was the place he would have announced it. Uh, but anyway, let's move over to WWE and talk about Karrion Cross because he was apparently set to return on SmackDown on the 3rd of November episode, the one that just happened, the one that was taped, so it would have happened before. Anyway, uh, Fightful Select came through with the report because uh, WWE scrapped this very last minute uh, saying that it would not have made sense for anyone involved um, they'd uh, actually uh, planned out something and even it was still on the uh, the run sheet of the show as it was going on basically they'd already planned to get rid of it but yeah. it was on there they have to move some stuff around it was a tape show it was a little bit easier of course um, it'd been scrapped earlier on in the day of the taping which would have gone down on the 27th I think Yes, that's so right. It was, it, yeah. So it would probably have probably got out as well. That Maybe that was some factoring into it. That's just completely my speculation. Uh, WWE very happy uh, with what's going on with uh, with Scarlett and uh, uh, Shotzi, uh, who would feature in Halloween Havoc. He was going to feature Shotzi, I should have mentioned that part. Uh, they they hosted Halloween Havoc. They've done Changer of Horrors. They were going around like spooky places and bumping into Drew McIntyre and stuff. He's a spooky um, guy. He is, and he's pretty brilliant after a Saturday as well. Carrying Cross last wrestled on WWE TV on the 11th of August. Um, a defeat to AJ Styles on SmackDown. He has been doing some stuff on socials I've seen where it's like, oh, black and white, and he's like, not in gorilla, but like by the side and going, oh, maybe I'm gonna attack this guy next. But yeah, we haven't seen bloody ages. Yeah, he's not been around in a while, and they canceled this segment. No word on what they might do with him next. Mm. Weird position. He's had such a weird career, this geezer in WWE. Why do I keep calling people geezers now? Yeah. He's younger than me, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and much healthier and much better looking. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, so he, cut, he, he debuts in NXT, like, very showy, oh, yeah. very showy style, of course, with the entrance. Has that Champa squash, which was really good. Has the title run, which I think lost a few people along mm -hmm. the way. But then he goes to the main roster. He has one of the worst introductions to the main roster of all time. As, was he still champion as well? I can't remember. I think he was still champion. Remember. They were like, wear this and yeah. do this and lose. The lose to Jeff Hardy via roll up and look confused. And by the way, Scarlett is not coming up either. Yeah, it was crap. Uh, they made him look like a demolition cosplay. Mm -hmm. uh, they released him, they brought him back and they've done next to nothing with him. Uh, look, I'm not the biggest cross believer in the world. I in that when I watch him I don't believe anything he does really mm -hmm. I think he's very okay at a lot of things but I'm not too sure uh, he is the all-conquering dominant monster they want him to be that being said it's true that they've done absolutely bugger all with him in the past yeah. year or so and uh, that's not how you get over no he, he's someone who has to be presented in a very specific way doesn't he like he can't be someone who goes 50 50 because it's like you're coming out there with this big pompous entrance saying you're gonna destroy everyone. It's gonna make you fall and pray. And then, yeah, you get rolled up by Jeff Hardy and we're like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think um, I, I, I think maybe that understandably why they said uh, it wouldn't have made sense for anyone involved. A, because like you said, it could have possibly been spoiled uh, what they're being on a t tape show. And B, if you're gonna bring Karrion Cross back, you have to go all in. You have to go, he's coming in, he's winning all these matches, he's winning this title, and he's holding it for this amount of time. You cannot go, we just sort of bring him in and have him feud with uh, uh, Shanti the Adonis. You're not doing anything, you can have him feud with him. And it's Trade like, wins. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. just like, you have to go all in on him, so understandable that they're, they're hesitant, let's say. Yeah, or maybe the idea just sucked ass. Who knows? All that. <laughs> Who knows? All that. We will never know. Uh, let's move over to uh, CM. Punk again. What? I've uh, heard about him for ages. Yeah, I mean, there was just some stuff going around yesterday, so I threw it in the video. There was a report, you know what these bloody things are like. Um, CM Punk was apparently gonna have a conference call with some directors from WWE, and it's like, no, he probably wasn't. Um, somebody tagged Sean Ross Sapp in this. Uh, basically, the, the account was like, hey, uh, the deal might already be done. There's a conference call. <laughs> I like it that Sean would find out about this via yeah. someone tweeted him. Someone added Sean and he quote tweeted it and said, 
uh, no conflicting news with no conflicting news with us. WWE still claims no. Uh, Ibu is a good person to follow, by the way, at Backup Hangman yeah. when it comes to the punk stuff, uh, as Sean later corroborated as well. Uh, so this is referring, obviously, to the. I mean, Survivor Series is right around the corner. It's in CM Punk's backyard. There's going to be speculation all day. Uh, I would just say that, that we've we've picked this apart mm -hmm. in every single different way so far. I'm not going to do that again. I will say that I would rather get my news from a Sean Ross app yes. or a Mike Johnson or a Dave Meltzer or a name another person who mm -hmm. has a track record, right? Uh, than uh, some faceless Twitter account whose tweets, uh, whose sentences resemble Jackson Pollock paintings. Yes, quite right. Uh, if you don't know where the capital, the capital letter button is, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, sort yourself out. It sort of even helps you sometimes. Yes, do you want to capitalise that? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll say this, uh, you know, all love and respect to, to Sean and to Ibu. But CM Punk's coming back at Survivor Series. 19 days, guys. Mark it in your calendar. There was a bloke doing the cage fighting thing with Punk, and I think he had a WWE logo on his phone. It was sticking out of his pocket, and CM Punk was like, like pointing at it sometimes. It's happening, guys. When have I ever been wrong about this? Next story. <laughs> I can't leave the US for oh, six months. He's broken his leg. He can't leave the house. Uh, it's residency regulations, oh. in fact, Andy. Uh, he revealed in an interview with Crone uh, that he won't be leaving the US for uh, for half a year. Obviously, he lives in Orlando, born in Vienna, Austria, um, and that means he's not going to be at Elimination Chamber, which I'm really annoyed about because I had this fantasy booking of him killing everyone in the Elimination Chamber like chopping his way into a pod to get someone out to beat them and then going on to win the world title at WrestleMania. So that's not going to be happening. Should be fine, obviously, for Bash in Berlin. That doesn't go down until uh, August. Uh, but in a, in a nicer side of things, he did say that um, he's only been home, uh, or only seen his wife Ginny, for six days in October. This will mean he gets to spend more time at home. Uh, 514 days, I believe, he's held the Intercontinental Championship for. Incredible reign. Mm. Uh, annoying that he can't travel, but uh, not the end of the world and certainly not uh, something that will make WWE want to take the title off him. No, for sure. Uh, and six days in a month, that's brutal. That's like old school WWE yeah. road schedule stuff. I guess he's been uh, touring about the place quite a lot lately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea about residency nope. and, and visas and, and travel. I don't know anything about any of that. Um, as long as Gunfer is still on my TV, that's good. And clearly he is. Uh, I'm glad that the Berlin show isn't until next August. So that's ages away. Mm -hmm. um, you'd imagine that as mainland European dudes, Imperium will be featured quite heavily on that. So yes. that'd be cool. I wonder, um, if, I wonder if this has kind of factored into it that they've gone, we need to a six month period at a certain amount of time. Here's a nice window. Let's do it here. Then we're not going to panic about you traveling to promote WrestleMania in Germany, for example, yeah. or, or wherever he, he wants to go. Just do an Austria show for him. Why not? They exactly. call it the Vienna... Uh, Viennese World. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to say Wiener Schnitzel, but yeah, that'll do. Oh, get, get, get Ultravox as the theme. Oh my God. <laughs> that is a banger. Uh, Vienna. I guess yeah. what is being played in the What Culture Office on loop today. No. Do you remember when we had that speaker? That didn't last very long, yeah, did it? Yeah, that was used for evil. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say that. Others yeah. might say... Pure it, it was very funny. It was very funny. One day indeed. we'll tell that story. Yeah. Maybe at the live show. Huh? Yeah. 25. Sorry, so Yeah. But <laughs> what you doing? You can't. But can. who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll do more live shows in the future. Maybe. Anyway, let's move on to your Twitter questions or X questions, whatever it's bloody called now. At What Culture WWE on there. Our first question today comes from Brian George. Hi, Brian. Um, says, Good morning, guys. Morning. Uh, once Roman finally loses the title and seemingly goes away for a while, do you think we might see Paul Heyman represent Jade Cargill? Ah. I think she needs a mouthpiece and she could definitely benefit from it. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's a good idea. Like, yeah. Paul Heyman isn't a guarantee of success as we've seen over the years. Obviously, his hit rate is higher. That he hits more than he misses. Yes. Um, but you know, he's had he's had his Michael McGillicuddy. He has to say more Brock's than um, McGillicuddy. Yeah, yeah. The beginning of the Genesis. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think him and Jade is a pretty cool yeah. combination. I think that um, I think that Jade is a good talker. Like she's got good delivery, and she can she can like uh, say a one liner like in a really catchy, fun way. And she's got personality and everything else. That being said, when it comes to the longer promos, yeah, she probably does. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who's benefits from having like an all time great talker like him in there. And yeah, I, exactly. I do the Brock thing there of like you don't you're not a complete mute, 
But yeah. when you do say something, you say it with impact. And even if you just do it for a year, her going around with Paul Heyman, learning from him cutting promos, is there a better learning tree to learn from? I can't think, I've said learn quite a lot in that sentence. I can't think of it. I've campaigned for a long time now to have Paul Heyman represent a woman. I was saying it with Ronda Rousey, I like the Jay Cargill booking Me now. too, I like him and Bron Breaker as well. Yes. Oh, that's the thing. Uh, Matt Thorne says, can we will LA, uh, LA Knight versus, Styles. <laughs> versus Logan Paul into existence? Yeah, I think that's the direction they'll head in after the thing. We, we spoke about this last week, uh -huh. didn't we? We kind of predicted, the Ray would lose the belt, which happened, of course, and the LA Knight would get screwed out of the main event, and that a nice, like, kind of, uh, kind of one B. Yeah. If he's not going to win the big boy, the big belt would be the US title. I think that's a good idea. I like the symmetry or the the juxtaposition. Sorry, it's the opposite of symmetry. <laughs> I like the IC title as this incredible match dominant wrestle guy Gunther over here and then the, the sh talker yeah. guy over here with the US title. That's a fun contrast uh, and I think that Knight versus Paul would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I I would have a, I have a good time. I think the bill would be incredible for that. I don't know whether you can hold off until WrestleMania, but it feels like a huge WrestleMania match if they want to do it there. Maybe they want to do it sooner than that with, with Logan, maybe the Rumble or something like that. Uh, I will say this. Thank you, Logan Paul, for saving Rey Mysterio's life on the weekend. He was going to land on his head and neck, and he's an old guy, and I have to say, I keep banging his praises, and I know outside of the ring, it is what it is with Logan Paul but he is a sensational pro wrestler. Hell yeah, like no arguments on yeah. any of that from me. But for the other stuff, Coffeezilla. Yeah, yeah, uh, great channel. Way, we'll uh, we'll be reviewing uh, Crown Jewel as part of our podcast, uh, What Culture Wrestling Podcast, where we get your podcast from a little bit later on today. Final question today comes from Vacants Manager. Who would benefit from a short three to four month run as champion in both the Fed and in AW? I really think Zoe Stark would benefit, mm. I like that shout, along with Lance Archer. Thoughts? Ah, uh, see, my definition of short is like two weeks. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm giving the belt to Eddie Kingston for a week oh. or two weeks in, in AW. They should have done it at Grand Slam this year. They should do it at Grand Slam every year. Obviously not every single year, but like I'm, I'm gonna will that into existence until they finally do mm -hmm. it. Uh, he should win it in a beautiful moment and then lose it in heartbreaking fashion, because that's his story. Uh, and in Da Fed, uh, Chad Gable, why not, for the same thing. I imagine he just, uh, it'd be great. Yeah. He's great. I don't know if it's the world title. Could be IC for Chad, yeah. to be fair. But in terms of in terms of giving people belts, world title in, in WWE, I'm just going to keep Shane, saying Shayna Baszler until it happens. So you're going to say Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon's son, Declan. actually. <laughs> Declan McMahon. <laughs> and in terms of AEW, I'm not talking about the World Championship. I'm certainly not talking about this week. Daniel Garcia, give him a mm. belt. Now be there about it. Do the or thing. Thrust the at them. Or it's not Daniel Garcia. Oh, wow. All right. Who's this? Winning a belt. Whoever this is, is going to win a belt in the next few months. And they're going to hold it for a day. Angelo Parker. Works for me. All right. Please come in. Come on, come on, Daddy Magic. I've just saw it. Julia Hart. Yep, there you go. Into that as well. They are. Why not? Well, let us know your thoughts on that in the comment section. Any suggestions? And uh, tell you what, whilst you're doing that sort of thing, robot stuff. Check yes. out this video right here. Peter Crouch. <laughs> <laughs>